I don't like turbulence. You can feel the flame wiggling about. It's quite big. Oh, so oh, bad oh. turbulence. It's not good. <laughs> oh, hold on tight. <laughs> you, you can even oh. see the wing. You can see the wing chicken. Oh my god. Oh, I think I need a gin and tonic after that. I think I need a few gin and tonics after that. Just steady my oh, nerves. Geez. Let's do it. It's brew day, and James and Martin have arrived at Heathrow Airport. Like the Wright brothers, Chuck Yeager and Neil Armstrong before them, they're leaving terra firma to accomplish a great triumph of human history. <sighs> Just as soon as they get through security. Hello, we're going through security at Heathrow's Terminal 5. Oh. I'm still amazed we got this malt, hops, and yeast through security. And the flight's up on the board, so this thing is going to happen. I think this way, this way, this way. We're going the wrong way. This way. It's almost time. Let's get the tram. I'm going to enjoy this flight. So we're checked in, we're through security, we've got our malt and our hops, and we're making our way to the gate. We've just missed the train. Ah, oh, it's because I was doing that piece to camera. I told you, we should have just got on the train. We should have paid attention to the task in hand. We're going to miss our flight. Fingers crossed we can make this happen. Straight. I think we're getting... My trousers are falling down. Hello. We made it. I'll help you. I'm the adult that has to accompany him. 1787 Dreamliner. An altitude of 40,000 feet. A top speed of 500 miles per hour. And a tiny bag of malt and hops. It all adds up to the first ever beer made in an airplane. Speedboard 100. Let's do this. Oh, that was money. Hello. Hey. Whoa. So we're going to need to be all over this as soon as this fasten seatbelt light goes off. We need to be good to go. What an incredible plane a Dreamliner is. Look at the size of the wing. So much better than pretty much anything that's not in British Airways. F hate them. You've always said that. I would never fly with any other airline. Don't. Just walk. If you're not going to fly with British Airways, walk. Do you think that's enough to get the funding for the episode? Yeah. Without making it feel like an advert? It definitely wasn't obvious. No, we nailed that. I'm James. How's it going, Captain? Hi, James. Welcome. Yeah, Hi, Martin. Nice Hello, to meet Martin. you. Nice to see you. Okay. How long have you been flying for, Captain? 35 years. 35 years of the So this is an actual 787 Dreamliner. Almost ready for takeoff. We are going. We've just pushed off like BA100. Dreamliner, seatbelt on. Let's brew the first ever beer on an airplane. After we've taken the seatbelts off. Oh yeah. Cabin crew, please doors, doors, and cross check. I think this is it. Captain. Head. See, that would be perfect. We just go yeah. there. Let's try it again. Just in case it works. Captain. Head. Oh, wow. Yes. This is actually going to happen. And. Look at them. And we're up. This is the real James and Martin, and we're about to brew a beer. It does feel faster than usual, it's it's steeper than usual, and bouncier than usual. Without the added weight of a full flight of passengers and luggage, this bird is flying light, which makes it far more susceptible to being tossed about in turbulence. I don't like turbulence. You can feel the flame wiggling about. It's quite big. Oh, so oh, bad oh. turbulence. It's not good. <laughs> oh, hold on tight. <laughs> You, you can even oh. see the wing, you can see the wing chicken, oh my god. Oh, I think I need a gin and tonic after that. I think I need a few gin and tonics after that, just steady my oh, nerves. Geez. Let's do it. I got to wait for the seatbelt sign. I've told you how many times. Come on, seatbelt's off. Do 
work, Chris? Uh, no. I'll see if I can find someone. Excuse me. And could you help us work this system here? Oh, right, the bed makers, right. The bed makers, or yes. today the beer makers. The beer makers, absolutely. Where are you putting the beer? Is it gonna go in the pot? So this one is going to be our hot liquor tank, so that one we just need hot water. Right. This one is going to be our mash tun, so in this one we're going to mix the malt with the hot water. Yep. We're going to use this asparagus, and this final one is going to be our kettle, so we're going to look to boil it in here. Okay, perfect. Press the T button and put the handle down, you'll press brew. That is a hot plate basically, so it'll keep the liquid warm. Amazing. It's like it was designed to make beer. I know, it even says brew. Thank I'll you. Leave it to it. Thank Thanks, you. Susie. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, Jerry Palmer with just a short message for you and a very good luck uh, with the beer. Uh, boys, please don't break anything. Uh, we look forward to seeing the result when we get on the break. That's the official seal of approval from the captain. Why did he ask us not to break in? To maybe see another episode of the show. Let's get the ingredients out. We have our malted barley, some beautiful American hops, and of course, the special ingredient, citrus peel. I don't think we've ever made a beer with like ingredients in this small quantities before. No, but we don't have much time, so let's get mashed then. So we've got our strike water, we've got our malt, we've got some maris water, we've got some crystal, we've got some caramel in there as well. Good to give us a nice full body, yet still quite pale base with a nice sweetness and a nice bit of backbone. The sweetness level is going to be a little bit dulled because of the altitude, so we need to keep the beer a little sweeter and we were instantly seeing some of that colour, like a deep dark gold with some ruby hues in there. It's beautiful. So we've mashed in perfectly. Let's get that back in there, set it down. We need the mash rest to happen. And that's the thing with mashing in. I always get really hungry, so I might go and get a snack in first class. I'm not sure you can just wander up into first class. Okay, so let's start the runoff. It's a bit different than normal because usually we'd have a false bottom on our mash tun and a little outlet to drain off the sweet wort, but we're going to have to do it slightly different here. Okay. So we'll use this sock and we'll pour the mash in and then pull the grains out. It's actually quite hot in my hands. <laughs> let's get all the malt in there. Yep. The smell coming off this is beautiful. Yeah. A nice caramelly, sweet toffee aroma. Perfect. So we need to pull this out, and then what we can do, we can use the coffee making part and then sparge the hot water through it. This is making beer in its most basic form. This is DIY, this is bootleg, this is bootstrap. But at the same time, this is beer elevated. Literally. Quite 40,000 feet. Okay. My hands are quite hot. Yeah. Here, let's put the kettle down. Ah, we should have thought about some gloves to be honest. I want to get this back in. Kettle is in, kettle is locked, warmers on. And this is usually what they use for making coffee. So, where you would put the coffee beans, we are actually putting the malted barley. Just trying to get the last bit of sweetness, last bit of flavour, last bit of sugar out of these grains. With a cruising altitude of 31,000 feet, the boys are halfway through their circuitous journey to Cardiff, Wales, which gives them about 90 minutes to complete their brew. So now we've got the sparge port, we're going to put that on top of the original mash and get it on to boil. So this is when we don't want turbulence. We've got these open containers of scalding hot liquid and we're going hundreds of miles per hour. It smells great. I think Susie would like to taste the port and see what we've used our bet maker for so far. I'll go see if we can find Susie. Oh, they're drinking champagne through here. <laughs> We're in business it's class nice class. in business <laughs> class. Do you want me to just check? It's okay. How the other half live. Anyway, do you think you'd like to come and taste the wort that we've made so far? Oh, I'd love to. Great. James, it's rubbish through there. You won't like it. Okay, I'm, I'm not going through there. So what we have here is what we call wort. It's essentially a hot malt tea. So it's going to be quite sweet with some really nice malt flavours in there. Well, I'm going to smell it. I can't taste it at this point because I'm on duty. Well, you can't. Oh, there's, you can't there's, there's no alcohol. It's completely non-alcoholic. No alcohol in here. No. Oh, perfect. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Oh, wow. That really is. It's like oval team, but less milk. Yeah. So this is essentially how every beer begins. You just mix the malt with the hot water, and this is what you get. Amazing. And I think you're an instrumental part of brewing this first ever beer brewed in an aeroplane. Unbelievable. I feel so privileged. We've got to finish this beer. You can maybe go and make the people in business class jealous with your glass of wort. I certainly will. Thanks for your help. See you later. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the engine.
version of a Dreamliner at 40,000 feet. Okay, so we're at the boil now. It's super, super hot. I'm going to be very careful and hopefully there's no turbulence. James, if you want to add the first hops. So we've got the same blend of hops all the way through. This is some of our favorite American hops. We've got Centennial, Amarillo, and Simcoe. And the aroma coming off of this already is amazing. Huge pine, huge citrus, a lot of orange. Perfect. Okay, okay let's get this back on so we don't lose the heat. Lock and load. With the hop addition complete and the guys soaring over their native Scotland, it's time to add the citrus peels to spike the taste on the world's first beer brewed on a plane. So this is such a key ingredient in this beer as well. With these, we're gonna bang in loads of fruit flavors and they're gonna be super, super amplified. And just off a tiny bit, just the intensity of that punchy citrus flavor is off the charts. And I think that's why gin and tonics are so popular at altitude because they have all that fruit flavor in there, that little acidic bite. So adding these peels is really gonna explode in people's mouths. By the way, if you're watching this, sitting in a British Airways flight, and you haven't yet asked one of your cabin crew for a lovely Speedbird 100, do that now. All you need to do is press a little button beside you and a wonderful British Airways assistant will come and give you a beer. It'll be the best decision you've made today, maybe the best decision of your life. Do it, you know you want to. Okay, that should be the boil finished. Done. Yeah. adding the most aromatic ingredients at the end of the boil just to keep as much of that aroma as we can. The blood orange and grapefruit peel. You're just getting this explosion of flavors just hitting your nostrils and it smells delicious. And that's the thing with citrus peel. All the real aromatics are in the peels, not in the fruit itself. So adding this is really just exploding out of the kettle. Oh, my ears keep popping. Are we going up or down? We might be starting to go down, so we need to get a move on. Yeah. Well, we need to cool this down. I think outside is like minus 60 degrees Celsius. We can just open the window and put it outside. If you open that window, you'd be sucked straight out and then right through the turbine. Maybe let's just put it in the fridge. Yeah, we should. As their flying brew house begins its final descent into Cardiff, the wort cools in the fridge and is ready for transfer. How's the temperature? Perfect. Okay. And the best thing about this antique kettle is that it has some holes drilled so we can strain out all the peel and the hops. Perfect. So we're now transferring the first bar ever brewed in an airplane. We are getting perilously close to making this thing happen. We've got to get it in here and we've got to pitch the yeast. So this is maybe the tiniest batch of beer we've ever made, yep. but also the most exciting in terms of how we made it, but also the most exciting in terms of what it stands for. Why have you got yeast in a little shampoo dropper? It's the only way I could get it through security. Perfect. Okay. Depending on your perspective, this is either one of the finest achievements in human history or a poorly conceived marketing gimmick by two companies that should know better. Maybe it's somewhere between the two. Captain Jerry, you can now land this plane. You better make sure this is completely secured in. I managed to get one of the infant seat belts. Oh yeah, perfect. This is more precious than anything. Yeah, they're really tight. I still can't believe me let us do this. <laughs> like, we've done it, I still can't believe we got to do this. We've done our job perfectly. Now it's just down to Jerry to get us safely back onto the ground. Cabin crew, take your seats for landing. In the capable hands of Captain Jerry Palmer, the world's first ever beer brewed on a plane is cleared for landing. Oh, <laughs> we've been six miles up in the air. We're now back on the surface of the air. With the first beer ever made in the skies, Speedbird 100. In today's troubled times, it's not often we can agree on something truly remarkable. BrewDog and British Airways have joined forces to set aside the differences between ground and sky, brewing a beer made at speed and altitude on an airplane. One of the greatest achievements in human history. I can't believe you didn't buy return tickets. I'm not going to fly again until I can drink Speedbird 100 on a flight. So we'll just walk. We'll just walk.
With cell service restored, the boys phoned their recipe to the brewery in Scotland. It's a 50-hour walk from Cardiff to London, so the brewery had plenty of time to ready a batch of Speedbird 100 to share with their British Airways family back at the lounge in Heathrow. Hey, guys. We're super excited and honoured to be part of this celebratory year for British Airways. We're super excited about a partnership to come up with a very special beer to celebrate the centenary. So, would you guys like to taste some beer? Yeah! So, what you've got in your glass is Speedbird 100. This is the fastest that beer has ever been made. This is the highest that beer has ever been made. Also, you can enjoy flying with BA even more. Although we're actually wasting each other's time here tasting it at ground level, this beer is designed to be drank at over 30,000 feet. But here goes anyway. <laughs>